Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sins and granting the peace of reconciliation. On this night, then, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, by his authority and in obedience to his command, I therefore forgive you all your sin. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, Simon, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, Lord, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example 
that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I don't know about all of you, but back in my previous life, B.C., before COVID, it seemed like there were always about a gazillion little things that were always competing for and demanding my attention. I often found myself spending an inordinate amount of time and energy tending to things that in final analysis were pretty inconsequential. And sometimes I felt like I was just getting lost in the weeds. Though I hesitate to use the word blessing, one of the things that I have at least appreciated about this period of shutdown mid-COVID is that much of the petty or peripheral stuff, the things that finally don't matter all that much, have for the most part fallen away. I, and I suspect many of you, have been given the opportunity or maybe have been forced to step out of that weed patch and reevaluate and tend to things that are essential. Worry about the things that matter most. A virus of all things is reminding us that our own well-being is inextricably linked to the well-being of our neighbors. Freed of what sometimes seems like endless meetings and long work days and countless after-school events, some of us are learning how to be family again and actually enjoying sitting down at a table for a meal. Many of us are rediscovering the joy and the value of things like reading and poetry, of beautiful music and art. We're learning the hard way, perhaps, that isolation, the ultimate outcome of individualism, isn't all that it has been cracked up to be. In fact, I think that most of us probably find ourselves longing for the day when we can once again gather with extended family or friends or even our worshiping communities. Will these lessons remain with us after the stay-at-home orders are lifted? I hope so, but that probably remains to be seen. In the meantime, though, I hope that at least a few of these lessons are being written on our hearts. I know that this time of shutdown has helped me refocus and put some things back into perspective when it comes to the church and the things we do here. Normally, during Holy Week, I would be sweating and fretting a myriad of little details that this year simply aren't going to happen. It's not that they were all necessarily bad. 
It's just that many of them ultimately were inconsequential, not essential to what it means to be the people of God, the church. And as many of them have fallen away during the season of Lent and now Holy Week, more significant themes and concerns have emerged. I think that many of us are now much more aware of vulnerable populations in our community. Kids who rely on schools for food or who do not have access to computers or the internet that they now require to continue their education. Those who face health concerns, not just for a few months, but every day of their lives. Small businesses who depend on local patronage. The homeless and the hungry who, because of social distancing, can no longer now even sit down to eat in a social services agency dining hall. If our eyes have been open to the worries and needs and the plight of those around us, then at least maybe one thing good can come out of this pandemic. And interestingly enough, that is not inconsistent with the themes of Lent or with what we hear Jesus say in the gospel this evening. After I got out of my own little weed patch, it dawned on me this year, maybe for the first time, that Lent begins with a focus on ourselves and nears its end by turning our eyes outward. We started this season of Lent by taking a hard look inward and acknowledging our own sinfulness and mortality. Tonight, though, in the lessons, our focus has been turned to Jesus and his selflessness. Our attention gets shifted from the dark ashes that were traced on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday to the signs and the sacraments that are associated with Monday Thursday, the laying on of hands in forgiveness, the washing of feet, the meal of Christ's body and blood, all gifts and signs of God's gracious love. Of course, tonight in worship, we will forego all of those tactile liturgical actions for the sake of public health. There will be no laying on of hands or foot washing or shared meal at the table. But maybe in kind of a backhanded way, by not following Jesus' example in doing these things, we are in fact actually fulfilling his commandment. His commandment to love one another. In so far that our focus gets turned from being no more than beneficiaries of Christ's love that's revealed to us in these signs and sacraments to actually becoming the means of grace ourselves, channels of God's love for the sake of our neighbors. Jesus did say, after all, to forgive others as we have been forgiven ourselves, to wash one another's feet as he has washed ours. And then he sums it all up in a new commandment that we love one another as he has loved us, even to the point of dying to self. Forgiveness, cleansing, sharing Christ's body and blood, they are not adiaphora. They are not inconsequential. They are all about love. But if in denying ourselves for a time, the rites and the sacraments that are so important to us 
for the sake of our neighbor, for the sake of our neighbor's health, if denying ourselves those things moves us out of the weeds and gets us to pay attention, if we find our inward focus and our self-concern being now turned outward toward loving one another and our neighbors as Christ has loved us, well then, that's not such a bad thing. That truly matters. Because revealing God's love to one another is exactly what Jesus had in mind for us all along. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and for all who are in need. God of love, unite your church in its commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate farm and garden. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations, agencies, and individuals that respond to disasters and offer relief and humanitarian aid to people and populations in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, heal all divisions between members of our congregation. Extend the hospitality of our fellowship beyond ourselves, that your love and welcome be made known to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, glorify your servants who walked by faith in this life and who now feast with you. Inspire us by the sacrifice of those who were imprisoned, persecuted, or martyred for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.